This is definitely a 16 plus verse. Uh, it is actually medieval. It's called The Four Wishes of St. Martin and has been performed to much amusement by myself and uh, especially by Lady Elspeth of Efferwick who introduced me to the song and um, it's really a great little verse. <laughs> In Normandy there lived a fellow long ago, of whom I'll tell a strange and clever fablio. He always loved St. Martin, so he called on him by name before he undertook each daily chore, and gay or glum he'd have no part in slighting his beloved St. Martin. He invoked St. Martin every day. One morn this peasant on his way to work as always, so as not to let St. Martin be forgot, cried out, St. Martin, come now here, whereon St. Martin did appear. My man, said he, you love me so you never want to have a go at any new activity without at first invoking me. I'll give you a reward right now. Leave off your labors and your plow, and give free rein to dreams of bliss. In sober truth I tell you this, whatever you in wishes for may ask to have you shall before. You make a wish, be careful though, you cannot take them back, you know. The peasant humbly bowed his head and turned away at once and sped in jubilation down the lane. Once home, he'd soon be brought to rain. While putting on culottes, his wife began, God damn your worthless life. How dare you leave your husbandry while time remains to plant a pea. It's still two leagues till Vesper tolls, and here you come to stuff your jowls, afraid you might not get your feed. You've never wanted to succeed through honest work. You'd rather feast. You'll come to no good end, you beast. Unless you show a little zeal, go, put your shoulder to the wheel. You're early calling it a day. Hush, dear, don't ruin your health that way, the man replied, because we're rich. Freed from toil and troubles which have brought us so much grief, I vow I met St. Martin only now. He let me have four wishes, still I didn't want to make them till I'd had a chance to talk with you, to judge from what you say to do. I ought to wish immediately for money, land, and property. On hearing this, she hugged the man, then lowering her voice began. My lord, can this be true? said she. Of course it is, as you shall see. Oh, dearest friend, exclaimed his wife, I've dedicated all my life to loving you, to serving you. You now must let me have my due. I only ask you to agree to give one tiny wish to me. You'll have the three remaining still as well as my devout goodwill. Now, hush, he answered her, my pet, I wouldn't do that on a bet because you women think like fools. Right off you'd wish to have three spools of hemp or wool or linen thread. I well recall St. Martin said that I should pay a special heed and wish for only things we need and which we'll put to use. My dear, I must do all the wishing here. You know, I fear what you might do were I to grant a wish to you. You might well wish for something which would make both you and I less rich. Your cravings are unknown to me. Were you to wish for me to be a bear or mare or goat or ass, instantly it would come to pass. That's why I dare not grant your prayer. My lord, in faith, she said, I swear by both my hands that you shall be a countryman eternally. I'd never change your shape for fun. I love you more than anyone. All right, my dear, said he, but make I beg of you, for Martin's sake, the sort of wish to do us proud. I wish that you may be endowed by God with pricks in every place. And may you have nor eye, nor face, nor head, nor arm, nor side, nor foot, on which a prick has not been put. Let everyone have cards, don't skimp, and let not one be soft or limp, but stiffer than an iron bar. You'll, then you'll appear the prick you are. No sooner had she spoken out, the countryman had broken out with pricks appearing on his beak and springing from his mouth and cheek, attenuated pricks and burly, large pricks, stubby pricks, pricks curly, bent pricks, sharp pricks, pricks immense. On every bone, however dense, pricks sprouted up with startling ease. A prick leapt up from both his knees. Keep listening and by God you'll hear of miracles from out each ear and right in high in front there now appeared a great prick on his brow while downwards to his feet that hick's whole body was a mass of pricks. From head to foot the pricks had sprung. He now, one might well say, well hung. 
The peasant, seeing his mistake, cried, What an ugly wish to make! How could you, woman? How on earth? I'd rather I had died at birth, so I have so many pricks, far more than anyone has seen before. My lord, I'll tell you why, said she. One prick alone's no good to me. It's always soft as fur, but now in pricks I'm wealthy anyhow. Consider this advantage, too. Whatever the occasion, you shall never fail to rise to it. You see, my wish was exquisite. You have no reason in the least to take offense, you handsome beast. The man said, I've been ruined by you. Now I shall have a wish since you are through. I wish, the goodman said at once, that you will have as many cunts as I have pricks. May you possess that many cunts and not one less. She found within a moment's space two cunts had now upon her face and on her brow four, side by side. In front and back, cunts multiplied. There were cunts of every kind, sinuous and straight, cunts brushy, hairless cunts, cunts piled and plushy, cunts both virginal and splayed, cunts well used, but cunts well made. And little cunts, cunts big as jowls, cunts bottomless, cunts on her jowls, and cunts upon her head and feet. The peasant's joy was now complete. My lord, what have you done, screamed she. What have you brought this wish on me? I'll tell you why, the goodman said, in one cunt, I'm not interested, since getting all these pricks from you. But dear, don't let that make you blue. On any street down which you stroll, you'll be well thought of as a whole. My lord, there is nothing left to say. Two wishes now we've thrown away. Now wish away, my cunts, your pricks, and cease to play these foolish tricks. You'll still have one wish left by which we may become immensely rich. The peasant made his wish at once. For him, no pricks, for her, no cunts. Whereupon she found to her despair her first cunt was no longer there. The man, too, when he ascertained that of his prick no trace remained, flared up anew at this mistake. My lord, she said, you've got to make our fourth and final wish to be. A prick for you, a cunt for me. No, be no worse off furthermore with things the way they were before. The fellow wished and thus remained with nothing lost and nothing gained. For though his pricks soon grew back on, his wishes all by now were gone. This fablio shall illustrate. A man's a fool to trust his mate against his judgment. Frequently he'll come to shame and misery. But of the wishes when twas done, he'd squandered two and she but one.